at the pike's behest. There once lived an old man who had three sons. Two of them were clever, but the third, Yemelia, was a fool. The two elder brothers were always working, while Yemelia lay on top of the stove all day long with not a care in the world. One day, the two brothers had gone to the market, and their wives said, Go and get some water, Yemelia. Lying on the stove ledge, Yemelia replied, I don't want to. Go, Yemelia, or your brothers will bring no presents for you from the market. Ah, uh, fine then. Yemelia got down from the stove, put on his boots, took buckets and an axe, and went to the river. He cut a hole in the ice, gathered a few buckets of water, and bent down to look into the water. He saw a pike fish swimming in the water. He reached in and grabbed it. This will be delicious. Suddenly, the pike spoke in a human voice. Yemelia, let me go back into the water. I will be useful to you later on. Yemelia laughed. What good could you do to me? I will take you home and tell my sisters-in-law to make some soup. The pike begged him again. Yemelia, Yemelia, let me go back into the water and I'll grant you anything you wish. All right, but first you must prove to me that you aren't trying to fool me. Then I will let you go. The pike said to him, Tell me, what do you want right now? I want my buckets to go home all by themselves without spilling a drop. The pike replied to him, Remember my words. Whenever you want something, just say, At the pike's behest, do as I request. And Yemelia said, At the pike's behest, do as I request. Off you go home, buckets by yourselves. As soon as he'd made the wish, the buckets marched up the hill. Yemelia put the pike back into the ice hole and began to walk after the buckets. The buckets walked through the village to the astonishment of the villagers while Yemelia followed the buckets, chuckling to himself. The buckets walked into Yemelia's house, jumped onto the bench, and Yemelia climbed back up on top of the stove. Some time later, his sisters-in-law said to Yemelia, Why are you lying there, Yemelia? Go and chop us some wood. I don't want to. If you don't, then your brothers will bring no presents for you from the market. Yemelia didn't want to get off the stove. He remembered what the pike had said and whispered under his breath, At the pike's behest, do as I request. Go and chop some wood, axe. And you, wood, come inside the house and jump into the stove. The axe jumped out from under the bench and into the yard and began to chop the wood. The logs filed into the hut and jumped into the stove. Some time later, his sisters-in-law said to Yemelia, Yemelia, we have no more wood. Go to the forest and cut some. Sitting on the stove, Yemelia replied, What are you here for? What do you mean by that? It is not our job to go to the forest for wood. Nah, I don't want to. Well, then you won't get any gifts. Nothing could be done. Yemelia got down from the stove and got dressed. He took a rope and an axe and got into the sleigh. Open the gates, women, his sisters-in-law said to him. What are you doing, fool? You haven't harnessed the horse yet. <laughs> I don't need a horse. His sisters-in-law opened the gate and Yemelia whispered, At the pike's behest, do as I request. Off to the forest you go, sleigh. 
and the sleigh rode out through the gate so quickly that even a horse couldn't keep up with it. After the forest came the town. He knocked many villagers over. The villagers cried out loud, Stop him! Catch him! But Yemelia only told the sleigh to go faster. He arrived at the forest and said, At the pike's behest, do as I request. You, Axe, cut some wood and dry it. And you, Logs, climb into the sleigh and bind yourselves together. The axe began to split the wood and the logs dropped themselves into the sleigh, binding themselves together. Then Yemelia ordered the axe to cut him a wooden club, one just the right weight for him to carry. He got up on top of his load and said, At the pike's behest, do as I request. Off you go home, sleigh. The sleigh drove off very fast indeed. Yemelia passed through the town where he had knocked down so many people. And there they were, all angry, waiting for him. They tried to pull him off the sleigh and began to curse and beat him. Seeing that he was in trouble, Yemelia whispered, At the pike's behest, do as I request. Come, wooden club, beat them. And the club rose up and began to beat them. The townsfolk got out of the way and Yemelia went home and climbed up on top of the stove again. Some time passed and the king heard about Yemelia's deeds. He sent one of his officers to find him and bring him to the palace. The officer came to Yemelia's village, entered his house and asked him, Are you Yemelia the fool? Why do you care? Hurry up and get dressed and I will take you to the palace. Nah, I don't want to. The officer flew into a temper and struck Yemelia across the face. And Yemelia said under his breath, At the pike's behest, do as I request. Come, wooden club, beat him. The club jumped up and beat the officer. He could barely drag himself back to the palace. The king was surprised to see that his officer had not been able to get Yemelia, so he sent one of his greatest nobles. Find Yemelia and bring him to my palace, or I'll have your head chopped off. The great noble bought a store of raisins, prunes and honey cakes. He came to the village and to Yemelia's house and he asked his sisters-in-law what it was that Yemelia liked best. Our Yemelia will do anything you want if only you are gentle with him and promise him a red caftan for a present. The great noble then gave Yemelia the raisins, prunes and honey cakes he had brought and said, Yemelia, why do you lie on top of the stove? Come with me to the king's palace. I feel great where I am. Yemelia, Yemelia, the king will throw a feast in your honour. Come with me, please. Nah, I don't want to. Yemelia, Yemelia, the king will give you a red caftan as a gift and a pair of boots with a hat. Yemelia thought for a while and said, All right then, only you go on ahead and I will follow behind. The noble rode off while Yemelia lay on the stove and said, At the pike's behest, do as I request. Off you go to the palace, stove. The corners of the house began to crack, the roof swayed, and the stove took off all by itself into the street and down the road and made straight for the king's palace. The king looked out of the window in shock. What is that thing? And the great noble replied, That is Yemelia, riding on his stove to your palace. The king stepped out of his palace and said, I have heard many complaints about you, Yemelia. You have hurt a lot of people. Well, why did they get in the way of my sleigh? At that moment, the king's daughter, Princess Maria, spotted him. When Yemelia saw her, he whispered, At the pike's behest, do as I request. Let the king's daughter fall in love with me. He then added, Take me back home, stove. 
The stove turned and walked back home, right into its former place. Yemelia lay back down upon the stove ledge again. Meanwhile, there were many tears at the king's palace. Princess Maria was pining for Yemelia. She told her father she could not live without him and begged him to let her marry Yemelia. This was not at all to the king's liking. So he said to the great noble, Go and bring Yemelia here, dead or alive. Do not fail or I'll have your head chopped off. The great noble took many kinds of sweet wines and set off for Yemelia's house. He entered the house and laid out a royal feast for him. Yemelia ate and drank well. He lay down and fell asleep. And the noble put the sleeping Yemelia into his carriage and took him to the king's palace. The king ordered a large barrel with iron hoops to be brought out. Yemelia and Princess Maria were placed into it. And the barrel was sealed and dropped into the sea. Some time passed and Yemelia awoke in the dark. Where am I? He heard the reply. Oh, such sadness and such woe. They have put us in a battle and dropped us into the sea. And who are you that is speaking? I am Princess Maria. And Yemelia said, At the pike's behest, do as I request. Come, wild winds, bring the barrel onto the shore and let it rest on the dry sand. The wild winds began to blow. A sea storm came and the barrel was swept out onto the shore, onto the dry sand. Yemelia and Princess Maria stepped out. Yemelia, where are we going to live? Shall we live in a simple house? Nah, I don't want to. But she begged and begged and at last he said, at the pike's behest, do as I request. Build a palace of stone with a gold roof. As soon as the words left his mouth, a stone palace with a roof of gold appeared. Around it, a green garden with flowers bloomed and birds sang. Princess Maria and Yemelia went into the palace and sat down by the window. Oh, Yemelia, couldn't you become a little more handsome? Yemelia did not think long before he said, At the pike's behest, do as I request. Turn me into a handsome man. And Yemelia turned into the most handsome youth that ever was born. At that time, the king was on his way to go hunting, and he saw a palace where one had never stood before. Who has dared to build a palace on my ground? He sent the messengers to learn who had committed this crime. The king's messengers ran to the palace, stood under the window and called up to Yemelia. Yemelia replied back to them, Tell the king to come and visit me, and I will tell him myself. The king did as Yemelia requested. Yemelia led him into the palace, seated him at his table, and feasted him royally. The king ate and drank. And tell me, who are you? Do you remember Yemelia? The fool who came to visit you on top of a stove? Do you remember how you put him in a barrel together with your daughter, Princess Maria? Well, I am that same Yemelia, and if I want to, I can set fire to your whole kingdom and raise it to the ground. The king was frightened, and he begged Yemelia to forgive him. You can marry my daughter, Yemelia. And you can have my kingdom too. Just spare my life. Then, as grand a feast as the world had ever seen was held. Yemelia married Princess Maria, and so began to rule the kingdom. <laughs>